Okay, now we're going to turn our attention to one of the most uh, notorious or controversial patterns in the Gang of Four book, which is the so-called singleton pattern. So if the visitor pattern is one of the most complex patterns in the Gang of Four book, the singleton pattern is one of the most controversial patterns. And we'll talk about that as we go through this. I'm going to show you how we apply the singleton pattern to centralize access to global resources in our expression tree case study without requiring the need for global variables. I would be remiss, however, if I didn't point out that uh, a lot of people think that the singleton pattern is at the root of all evil. And so you have to be uh, very careful in how you use it. I think my usage of it in this context is, is reasonable and acceptable, but uh, reasonable people might see it differently. At any rate, it's not a question of whether the pattern's good or bad. The question is, what are the alternatives to applying it? And have you made a good faith effort to uh, look at other ways of doing things before you settle on singleton? So we're going to use singleton in our expression tree processing app case study to allow us to access global resources without using global variables. And this is a time-honored challenge, especially in a language like C++, where global variables come with some weird semantics that make them tedious, error prone, and very tricky to use properly. So what's the motivating example? Well, the context here is that there are certain types of objects in our expression tree that we only need one instance of. So we don't need to have multiple of these things. We just need one of them. Uh, so for example, command line options. There's only one command line option uh, that's passed in. It's the you know argc, argv parameter to main. And so we really only need to have one object that deals with command line options. And likewise, there's a uh, an event dispatching mechanism called a reactor that we use to drive our program to get input from users. And we only need to have one of these. There's only one source of user events. So we only need to have one reactor. So both of these types of capabilities, option processing and event dispatching, really can be satisfied with a single object. And so that's what we're going to use to, to motivate this pattern. Passing these uh, parameters as objects, or passing these objects as parameters to all the methods can become tedious and cluttered because you have to pass option parameters to everything. You have to pass the dispatcher method to everything. So once again, it's not that singleton is necessarily bad. It's, it's what is it relative to? And of course, if you need more than one of something, then singleton becomes a really bad idea. But in our case, we really only need one of these things. So why don't we just go ahead and make global variables? Why don't we have an options global? Why don't we have a reactor global and just be done with it? Well, there's a number of problems with globals. Uh, first and foremost, they increase implicit dependencies in your code, because now you have these dependencies that are that are not really obvious from looking at the APIs, they just appear globally. And that can help to, or that can help, that can hurt program clarity. It makes things less clear. There's some other things that global variables have as a side effect or a downside as well. They can incur time and space overhead even if they're not used. They can't be extended transparently, and they may not be initialized and destroyed properly in certain programming languages and certain runtime environments. And, and C++ is um, clearly one of those such an, of those environments. So we'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, there's a nice, funny link. I guess it's not so funny, but it strikes me as funny, uh, called Global Variables Considered Harmful. And it talks about all the downsides with global variables. The reason I think it's funny is because whenever people historically want to call attention to something in computing or programming, they say such and such considered harmful. So the, the first such Example was Edsger Dijkstra's famous paper, Go To Considered Harmful. And uh, since that time, we've had, you know, null pointer considered harmful, global variables considered harmful, switch statements considered harmful, pointers considered harmful, right? You name it, something is considered harmful. Um, I guess it's really not that funny, but for those of us who've been around for a long time, it's a, a way of calling attention to something to get people uh, up in arms to, to make a difference. We're not going to address all the downsides with global variables by using singleton. We're just going to address the three that I've highlighted here. The time and space overhead, the extended transparently, and the inability to initialize and destroy things properly. That's what we're going to address. The program dependencies and clarity issue is, is not really addressed by singleton, which is why people don't like it. So let's take a look at what we're trying to do here and, and 
dive into this example just a little bit more. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to give ourselves a central access point to global resources like options or re reactor event dispatchers without necessitating the use of global variables. And here's what we do. We're going to use the singleton pattern to make ourselves the one and only instance of options. And you can see here that we make an options instance. We're going to use it in a couple of places and we're going to clean it up when it's all done and we're going to put it in a unique pointer so it automatically gets cleaned up when we're finished. Likewise, we're going to make ourselves the one and only instance of the reactor, which is this event dispatcher that can be used to wait for something to happen and then do callbacks to code to handle the input that's coming from users. We're also going to use our option singleton to uh, designate whether we want to make verbose mode or succinct mode implementations. We'll, we'll talk about that when we talk about the template method pattern. And then you can see how we use our option singleton to process all the user input by callbacks onto the registered event handler that handles different kinds of events that correspond to uh, the operations you can do in verbose mode or succinct mode with, with our template method pattern, which we'll talk about later. So these are nice examples of where we're using singletons. You can see that I'm also kind of dressing this up a little bit to, to make sure that those singletons will be deleted automatically when they're not needed and their state will be restored to a pristine condition.